Oh boy. Here we go. I didn't expect myself to make a ramble around this time, seeing as I've been on a motivational burnout throughout the last two weeks, but seeing as I expressed interest into this topic, I might as well give my opinions on it. So for those who don't know, towards the end of January this year, the Genesee and Wyoming got into a legal settlement with the federal government for violating the Clean Air Act, and as a consequence, the GNW is forced to retire 88 diesel locomotives from its roster, which several of them were locomotives from the first and second generation of diesels. Aside from having to pay a $1.3 million penalty, none of these locomotives that have been listed are to be sold or even preserved, as they must be quote-unquote permanently destroyed and be replaced with new locomotives. This has been another rude awakening for the rail fanning community, as multiple iconic locomotives are now being endangered, with some highlights including former Illinois Central GP10s and Pennsylvania GP9s from the Ohio Central, SW7s from Railing, rebuilt GP8s from the Arkansas Midland, Super 7s from the Ohio Central, various GP16s, GP10s, B23-7s, GP18s, and SC40T-2s. And the largest casualty, many of the old first-gen EMDs from the Portland Western, some of which still wearing their original Southern Pacific colors. Looking in hindsight, people have either been putting the blame on the federal government for starting these retirements, or putting the blame on the GNW who got themselves in the situation. In all honesty, the Gen C in Wyoming is to be blamed. They originally stated that they would have rebuilt any of their older locomotives to comply with new EPA regulations, but either didn't rebuild them or likely falsified the paperwork just to get away with it. Originally, from what I heard, the GNW entered in the tax credit program to get tax credits from rebuilding locomotives. But seeing as it didn't go through with anything, and failing to go with court rulings, is why we're right here right now. Now, about the locomotives. It is saddening to see many older locomotives going, as some of them do have some significance, especially the P&W SC7s. I also feel like some of the railroads were intending to retire them in the long run, likely due to running costs, lack of spare parts, mechanical problems, or the condition that some units are likely in, justifying not to keep them running for the future. If that's the case, it is understandable, to an extent, in the face of diesel locomotives. Some people say they could have just destroyed the engine block and prime mover, then donate said locomotive to any museum or railroad outside the GNW. But seeing as they're under the strict mandate of scrap and replace, it seems very likely to not happen. But in all honesty, I have the feeling we might get some undercover storing similar to how steam locomotives were done. Back in the final years of steam locomotives, there have been many cases of steam locomotives avoiding the cutter's torch by being hid away in locomotive sheds, rail yards, or in secluded areas in hopes of finding people to preserve them. While I do feel like it's possible, I kind of have mixed feelings that some railroads would more than likely not give a shit about the significance of their locomotives. I mean, this is owned by a giant railroad company, after all, that isn't around the same length of a Class 1. Nonetheless, what are your thoughts on the situation? You think some locomotives will escape scrapping? You think the GNW is at fault? Let me know in the comments below. But in all honesty though, this is another situation that leaves us worrying about the future for these old locomotives. <laughs>